This is the tutorial in which we're really going to derive the explicit equations for the reflection coefficient for S polarized light coming in an interface. So let me sketch the situation once again. We've of course got an interface and we've got a plane wave coming into it characterized by a wave vector K and coming in at an angle that we define by theta 1. So our givens for this problem we could write as being the electric field of the incident light. Let's go ahead and draw that. This is S polarized light. So we draw an arrowhead coming out at us from the board. We call that E incident. So that's one of our givens. And we also are given the angle theta 1. And of course, we're also given the refractive index N1 and N2 on the two sides of the medium. But the variables that we'll consider in these problems are the amount of electric field on the way in and the angle. And then we've got some unknowns. We're going to have a reflected beam coming off. That's another plane wave with an amplitude E R for reflected. And it's characterized by a wave vector, a wave vector K prime. And then similarly, we've got the transmitted beam characterized by a wave vector Q and it's got a transmitted S polarized electric field plane wave with a magnitude ET. And the essential unknowns that we want to solve for here, the unknowns, one of them is the amount of reflected light. And we don't really care about solving for E reflected. If we double E incident, we're gonna double E reflected. It's the ratio we care about. And that's why we, the reflection coefficient R sub S is what we want. So given E incident, we want to know what's the ratio of E reflected to E incident. And the second thing that we want to know is the transmission coefficient which is the ratio of the transmitted plane waves electric field amplitude to E incident. And just as a reminder, these are all plane waves, so the mathematics of each plane wave is that the E incident plane wave, it's equal to some magnitude E incident, which is what's being written there. And it's coming out of the board at you. We'll call that the Z hat direction, quickly give you our coordinate system. X hat is the direction of going into the interface and Z hat is coming out of the board at you. And then our standard E to the I K dot R minus omega T. One thing to note is that we're considering this problem at the X equals zero plane. We're thinking about the strength of the electric fields coming into and out of the plane of the page due to incident, reflected, and transmitted light along the boundary. And remember, we've already discussed the fact that at x equals zero, all three plane waves, all three plane waves have the same factor of this term here. And that all three plane waves are going as E to the I K Y Y minus Omega T. That's been discussed elsewhere. That just says that this, this term sort of drops out of the problem because it's common to all of the waves at the interface. So we're only going to be concerned now with these coefficients and how they add and combine and relate to each other. This complicated stuff is now dropped out. The other thing to note here is that we're S polarized and for S polarization, note that the perpendicular component 
of all the fields is zero. There is no component of this light normal to the interface. So E perpendicular for all cases is zero, and E parallel is equal to E. There is only parallel components of the light, so E parallel is the total electric field. So we have two unknowns, RS and TS. We need two equations. So the first equation is going to be what we do for the first equation is we look at the total electric field E right here at the interface. Now that's governed by E parallel because E is equal to E parallel. So equaling, setting the left-hand field total equal to, equal to the right-hand field, what we've got is E1 parallel equals E2 parallel. And we unpack E1 parallel. Well, it's the sum of E incident and E reflected. So we write E incident plus E reflected is equal to E2 parallel, which only has one component, E transmitted. If I just divide all three of these terms by E incident, I will get E incident divided by E incident, which of course is just one. I get the reflection coefficient for S polarized light here, and I get the transmission coefficient for S polarized light there. So here is the first equation I need. I'm trying to solve for these two unknowns, and I've got one equation for it. What's my second equation? So for the first equation, we looked at the total electric field E. For the second equation, we're going to seek out an equation for the x derivative of the electric field. And this is related to us observing that the electric field from left to right is not only continuous across the boundary, the left-hand field equals the right-hand field in its parallel component, but the derivatives are also s continuous across the boundary, which is to say the electric field is smooth across the boundary. Now, how do we go looking for dE dx? What I'm going to tell you to do here, remember that dE dx E is in the z hat direction, so if I just observe that that's by definition dEz dx, you'll notice that that's uh, the x derivative of a z component. That conceptually makes me think about taking curls of E. The curl of E is an expression which is going to have a derivative like that. The divergence of E is not. So what I'm, what I'm going to do in my first line here is to write exactly that. I'm going to analyze the curl of E. And of course, I know from Maxwell's equations that that's equal to the negative time derivative of the magnetic field. And we know, because we're dealing with monochromatic waves here, just one frequency, that that is equal to plus i omega. That's what we get from the time derivative. Cancels out that minus sign. And I get i omega b. So this is stuff we've seen before. Well, now that I've got this Maxwell equation, let me add in one more piece of physics, which is to note another thing, sort of like the E parallel components being equal. Let's remind ourselves, parenthetically, that the B components that are parallel to the interface are also equal. That's something that's being proven on a problem set by you guys. So let's keep alert for that. The, w the way we keep alert for that is this is a vector. Let's just take one scalar component, one component of this vector. Let's specifically take the parallel component of B to the interface. Well, B is pointing along this direction like this. So the, p the component parallel to the interface is the vertical component, the Y component. So let's write that component of I omega B. And we will just get I omega B parallel. And let's now consider analyzing this problem on the left-hand side of the interface. 
So on the left hand side of the interface, I omega B1 parallel is going to be equal to the y component of this curl. Well, the y component of a curl will have dEz dx and dEx dz. There is no ex, so the only term that survives in that curl expression here is dEz dx. dEz dx. But ez is the entire field e, so I can just say it's dE. So on the left-hand side of the interface, this curl expression becomes DE1 dx equals I omega B1 parallel. Similarly, on the right-hand side of the interface, DE2 dx is equal to I omega B2 parallel. And then I use this equation in yellow to notice that these two terms equal each other. So these two terms are identical, and that means DE1 dx equals DE2 dx. So DE1 dx equals DE2 dx. Now let's evaluate that expression for these plane waves. If I take an x derivative of this plane wave, the only place an x appears is here, in this dot product. This is kxx plus kyy plus kzz. So there's an expression of the form e to the i kxx that's living in this overall expression. When I take an x derivative of that, it'll bring down a factor of i kx. So my evaluation of this blue equation here on the left hand side I take a derivative of the incident plane wave and I get I kx times E incident and then all this stuff here that stays the same for all terms that's the assertion made over here then I take a derivative of the reflected wave and I get the same exact expression except instead of I kx it's I k prime x E reflected, and then that equals I QX E transmitted. Now I just do some simplifications here. You'll notice that the K vector and the K prime vector, we already have said that they have the same Y components to these vectors, and they're in the same medium, so they have the same length, the wavelength, and therefore the wave number are the same, so they have equal and opposite X values. So we can assert that kx prime equals negative kx and feed that in here. And so now we're going, we can say that there's two kx terms on the left hand side. We're going to cancel out all the i's and we get kx times e incident minus e reflected the kx prime has been replaced by a negative kx and this equals qx e trans e is transmitted when I divide this by e incident just like I divided this equation by e incident I get kx times 1 minus rs equals qx times ts and that now is our second equation where the unknowns are RS and TS. We've now got two equations and two unknowns. We send those two equations together. If I substitute here for TS using the first equation, I can rewrite this equation as the following. KX in the very parallel looking expression kx times 1 minus rs equals qx and then for ts I write 1 plus rs and that is a very important single equation now that has eliminated ts 
it's only got RS in it. And so from this equation, which we'll really highlight as being important, uh, a little bit of straightforward mathematical manipulation. The only unknown now is RS, and you solve for it, and it's equal to KX minus QX over KX plus QX. And then if you just add 1 plus RS, you get TS. 1 is KX plus QX over KX plus QX. And if you just do a little bit more math on figuring out what 1 plus RS is, you get that it's equal to twice KX over KX plus QX. A subsequent tutorial will teach us how to render these KX and QX expressions in terms of more familiar uh, ref refractive indices N1, N2, and cosines of the angles theta1 and theta2. But these expressions are going to serve us very well as we continue to forge along and consider total internal reflection.